Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen, welcome back to Sunday Morning and the Old Cookbook Show. Today we're going to do another recipe out of the Toronto Queen City of Canada Cookbook. This was published in 1915. Um, as far as you know, it's a community cookbook, it was a charity cookbook. Um, by all accounts, it was a failure as, 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 a, as a fundraiser. Um, and a lot of copies were left over. And I believe that this is one of the copies that were left over. And what happened was after World War I ended um, and the charity that was founded that this money was supposed to go into um, had moved on, the leftover cookbooks, they had a section at the front that was removed. And it would have been removed right between these two pages. So my cookbook starts on page five. Um, and so... The first four pages of this cookbook uh, were removed because they no longer wanted to mention the charity. And so today we're going to do um, maple sugar pie. And I'm kind of excited for this one. It seems like a cross between uh, sugar pie, of course, maple sugar, and a custard pie. So the first thing I need to do is heat one and a half cups of milk. Forget what I was saying. Cross between a custard pie and a sugar pie. We need one and a half cups of milk to start with. And so I'll put that milk into this double boiler. Double boiler is almost hot. I am going to need a half a cup of milk for later that I'm gonna mix some cornstarch into. So I'll put that in now. Set that aside. Now we need maple sugar. And so this is our homemade maple sugar, um, made from maple syrup from our own trees in our backyard that we tap. And when I'm filming this, uh, it's time that I should be out there uh, getting ready to tap the trees. But we had a really bad windstorm last summer. And we lost a couple of maple trees and the other ones are severely damaged. So I don't know that I'm gonna tap them this year. Just gonna have to buy syrup. And yes, if you're keeping track at home, this is an awful lot of maple sugar. In today's time period, it's a pretty expensive pie. Now, it might seem like there's a lot going on here, but really there isn't. It's just a lot of little things, uh, but none of them are really all that too difficult. So the milk is heating up. The maple sugar is, is, is measured out. I've got some milk here that I'm supposed to put cornstarch in, and it says two heaping teaspoons, two rounded teaspoons of cornstarch. So I'm gonna say that's that. And I'll just use a fork, mix that in. Set it aside, and now I need to separate two eggs, so. Uh, since I'm whipping the eggs into like a meringue, whites in the copper bowl, yolks in the glass bowl. And I'll just give those a little whisk. Okay, so that's heating up. We're gonna add the maple sugar in at this point, stir it in. And we're supposed to bring this pretty much to a boil in the double boiler, so. Okay, I'm gonna say this is hot enough now. I'm supposed to stir in the milk that has the cornstarch mixed in. And cook this for eight minutes. That smells heavenly. Okay, now we need to temper the egg yolks with the hot milk. And this is one of those operations that, you know, in cookbooks and recipes and stuff, they really try to scare you that this is something really scary and difficult to do and it's gonna to lead to disaster. It, it isn't, it really isn't. The worst thing that can happen is you're gonna spill on the countertop. You've got a whisk, you've got some egg. You just whisk and drizzle and drizzle and drizzle and that's it. By the time you reach this point, you're in the clear. 
and you can go a little bit heavier with your pour. Now I'll put that back on the double boiler and pour this back into the pot and continue whisking and cooking until it thickens up a little bit and is smooth. Okay, I think we're good. So I'm gonna turn the heat off. I've got a pie crust here in the freezer. This is a butter pie crust. Um, you can find the recipe elsewhere um, on our channel. I'll try to link to it down below. This just says pour into a paste lined plate and bake. Um, doesn't tell you which paste to use. Totally up to you what pie crust you want to use. Um, I decided that butter might be good on this one. Now we pour this in and bake. What temperature and how long, who knows. And in the oven I've got our pizza stone and I'm going to set this pie tin directly onto the pizza stone. And I'm going to start with a cook time of about a half hour. Um, so. It's a metal tin, not a glass plate. And I'm putting it on the pizza stone and I found that I get a much better bottom crust using this method. And this is an eight inch pie tin. Make sure I say that right, pie tin. And if you're worried about spilling it or having it bubble over, put it onto a rimmed baking sheet before you put it in the oven. That way it's easier to clean up. Okay, the pie is almost cooked and it gets a meringue topper. So I've got two egg whites here in the copper bowl and I'm gonna whip them to stiff peaks. But I'm gonna whip them about halfway first and then we're going to add a quarter cup of powdered sugar. Okay, so a little bit of powdered sugar and keep whipping. Okay, those egg whites are looking really nice and thick and glossy. So, get the pie out of the oven. So this is one of those operations that always kind of freaks me out, putting meringue on a, on a blisteringly hot pie right out of the oven. Even though I know I'm gonna put it back in the oven in order to brown the meringue, it just always seems wrong. So, spread it out, make sure I've got the meringue touching. Oh. <laughs> Try not to spill all over the countertop, but try to get the meringue to touch the pie crust on the edge. And I mean, if you want to pipe it on, go right ahead, pipe it on. I'm just going to get it on here. I'm one of those people that, you know, <laughs> well, you know. So here I am, uh, making the top just a little bit raggedy so that it browns nicely and back into the oven to brown. Oh, crispy on the crust. Hey Ooh, Jules. Hey Glenn, hey friends, a meringue pie. A meringue pie. Now, one of the problems I always find with meringue pies oh, you've is, got a plate. is that... Um, I assume it's lemon? No. Dun dun! Oh. Is that... I could tell that it wasn't, it just, I was speaking, I was speaking. By the time you by the time you get it to the table, it's deflated. It looked so good when it came out of the oven. So it looks kind of like a custardy pie. Like it looks like it could be a pumpkin pie. It's a maple custard pie. Oh, so I'm all ready to taste, but I'm just wondering if you know meringue on other custard pies might be good. Uh, probably would be good. Um, definitely would be good. Okay. <laughs> oh my. That's really good. Now. Yeah. That's um but I mean, you've gotta like maple syrup. Like that's that's like a really nice little maple syrup treat. How much maple syrup is in that to get that flavor? So that's a cup of maple sugar. Maple sugar? Which is probably when you're doing the sort of the probably about three cups of maple syrup by the time you do the conversion to maple sugar. So no syrup then, just the maple sugar. Just the maple sugar. Good thing we've got trees. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and pie tin, hot oven, pizza stone, excellent bottom crust. It is. It's nice. It's got a nice crisp yeah. crust on Not it. Not soggy at all. Nice and crisp. I know. You just want to keep eating it. 
Which is probably not a good idea. There's a tiny little sliver. Uh-huh. Okay. Because we haven't had supper. <laughs> That's a great pie. If you ever find yourself with an overabundance of maple sugar, um, I would give that a try. It's interesting, though, if you had different flavored sugars. Wait, it could just be a brown sugar pie. Yeah. You know, it could be uh, uh, any any brown sugar, palm sugar, coconut sugar, any of those brown sugars. It would be it would be a great pie. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.